welcome to Keen on Keys. For a lot of people, this is the ultimate home keyboard, or the holy grail of home keyboards, the Casio Tone MT400V. It's a very close relative to the MT65 I've shown you in another video. And the MT400 has a lot of the same features, but instead of the modulation effect, it has an analog filter control with cutoff, resonance, ADS envelope and a noise generator. It was released in 1984. At a time, the digital synthesizers like the DX7 started to conquer the world. And also Casio was about to enter the professional market with the digital synthesizers like the CZ101. So an analog filter might have been seen as a step backwards. And I'm not quite sure if this model was very successful back then. But nowadays it's for sure one of the most sought after MT models. And the filter was actually a step into the future. Analog synthesizers are more popular than ever before. The manual calls it a revolutionary electronic keyboard. Well, of course a filter control wasn't revolutionary at that time. And the concept of a preset synth with adjustable filter wasn't even new. A couple of professional synthesizers of the 70s, like the Roland SH2000 for example, were built the same way. Some presets and a filter section which can be switched on and off, but without the ability to create totally new sounds from scratch. However, the combination with typical home keyboard features like rhythms and accompaniment makes the MT400 quite unique, cause the filter can also be assigned to these. A lot of the other features might be quite familiar to you, cause most of them are the same as on the MT65. 49 mid-size keys, 8 note polyphony, 20 tones, vibrato, delayed vibrato, sustain and reverb, and in addition to that a stereo chorus. But this is the only stereo effect on this keyboard. If it's switched off, the keyboard is completely mono. We have 12 rhythms and fill-ins, two chord modes, but no manual bass mode, four variations for bass and chord patterns, no arpeggio, but there are separate volume controls for rhythm, bass and chords. On the left hand side we have a power jack, RCA line outputs, a headphone jack, pitch control and a jack to connect a speaker. These nice little speakers can be attached to the back of the case, or you can put them anywhere close to the keyboard, cause the cables are very short. This design was first used for the MT800, which came out a year earlier. I guess mainly to keep it the same form factor as the other MT models. On the right hand side we also have a jack named Filter Control. This is for the BFC1, an extremely rare breath filter controller. Also a very unique feature for a home keyboard. And it was the main selling point in Casio's advertisement. Remarkable that the BFC1 wasn't available when the MT400 was released. I really wanted to show you how it works, but it's hard to find, and the few I saw were very expensive. I would have paid more than for the MT400 itself, which today costs about $100 on the used market. The original price was £255 or $350, much more expensive than the MT65. It was also produced in a larger version, as the CT410V. But besides the size and the look, there are very little differences between the two models. The 410V has additional connections for sustain and volume pedals and built-in speakers. And these two are the only models with a V in the name, cause V stands for filter. I will clean it and have a quick look inside. A large main board and a small power board. There are a few holes in the main board to access a couple of trim pots on the other side of the board. Here is the NEC D930G accompaniment chip. We have already seen in the MT45 and 65. Unfortunately, the boards have no connectors and the cables are very short. I will clean all parts with water and soap 
In the meantime, you can have a look at the other components. These are the trim pots for the analog drums, except for the hi-hats. And one of these trim pots can be used to change the resonance. I won't mess around with it, at least not for now. I would like to show you the filter in its original state. Once you've touched the foam, there's no turning back. And here we have the D931. Since this keyboard uses the same sound chips as the MD65, it is possible to add all the missing features, like arpeggio, the modulation effects, manual bass, and a lot more. Casio has changed the design of the key contacts during the production of the MD65 and 68. Therefore, the keys had to be changed a little. The black keys are the same. The white keys have a second cross-shaped projection to push the contacts. First a bit grease for the keys. The buttons are a bit tricky. They all have to be in the up position, otherwise they won't work. careful with the switches. The metal ball is only held in place by some grease. The keyboard runs on 6 D-sized batteries or 9 volt power supply. As always with Casio keyboards, negative center. The speakers don't sound too bad, but of course I will connect it to my audio interface. I use the headphone output. All outputs have nearly the same volume and they are all quite noisy. As I mentioned earlier, the MT400V has many similarities with the MT65, which I've showed you in one of my last videos. So I recommend to watch that video first. We have the exact same 20 tones and 12 rhythms. The MT65 sounds a bit brighter. This is the case with all of the tones. Otherwise, they are the same. With the drums, it's the opposite. Here, the MT400V sounds brighter. These are just minor differences, and that's not really surprising. I guess another MT400V will also sound a little bit different because of the analog circuitry. But the accompaniment, the bass and the chords sound really different. We have the same four effects. Vibrato, delayed vibrato, sustain and reverb but in addition to that, a stereo chorus with adjustable speed. But let's talk about the filter control. Remember, here we have the vowel consonant synthesis again, which Casio used for most of their models until 1986. Two multiples waveforms with separate envelopes are modified by an analog filter. So in essence, we have a subtractive synthesizer. With most Casio keyboards, the filter settings are fixed. But with the MT400, we can turn off the preset filter completely and use the filter control instead. So it's not added to the preset filter, it replaces it. The filter is a low pass filter. Everything below a certain frequency will pass through the filter. And everything above this frequency will be cut off. This frequency is set by the cutoff control. So you can open or close the filter and determine how much high frequency content will pass through. If you turn cutoff all the way up, 
and also put sustain level to maximum, I will talk about that in a second, the filter is completely open. All frequencies will pass through. This is clarinet. If you now switch the filter on, we hear the original waveforms without any filtering, so it sounds brighter. And this is the case for most of the tones. Listen to the piano. And with the preset filter. The pipe organ doesn't sound that much different, cause it already has a bright filter setting. But now we can make it less bright by changing the cutoff. Add some resonance. Resonance emphasizes the frequencies around the cutoff frequency. That will make the sound brighter, but will also reduce the bass. Unlike many other subtractive synthesizers, resonance can only be set very moderately. Usually it's possible to bring the filter to self-oscillation. That isn't possible with this filter, which limits the possibilities a bit. But that's not all. We also have three options to modulate the cutoff frequency over time. First is the filter envelope, with a tag, decay and sustain. You might know this kind of envelope in combination with volume. But here we are not changing volume, we are changing the cutoff frequency. Attack determines the time the frequency needs to rise to the value set by the cutoff slider. It's a bit short. The maximum length is a bit more than one second. But it also depends on the cutoff frequency. The lower it's set, the shorter the attack. Decay determines the time the cutoff frequency needs to drop to the value set by the sustain level. The sustain slider isn't very accurate. It needs to be above 4 or 5 to get audible sustain. This also shortens the decay, cause it takes less time to get to the higher sustain level. But what's unusual about it is, that it also shortens the attack. The higher the sustain level, the shorter the attack. That's really unusual. Attack should be independent of the sustain level. But anyway, here are some examples. If you lower the sustain while decay is very short, the filter is only open for the very first bit of a note. Now it sounds a bit like a street organ. Use this setting with Cosmic Tone for a percussive attack, so it sounds a bit like a clavinet. And it also sounds shorter than the original. Slow down attack. and add resonance. Too much resonance can make the sound thin and sharp. Make decay slower for an even sweep. And turn down sustain so the sound fades out. There's a variety of sounds possible, from soft and sweeping pads, to short popcorn-like sounds,
and nasty clavinet sounds that would usually be named funny or funky if there were presets. <laughs> And a lot more. sound a bit distorted from time to time, but I like that. And of course you can change the tones while playing. The notes are re-triggered when changing a tone. Speaking of re-triggering, the filter envelope is triggered every time you press a key. But the starting point may vary depending on your playing speed. If you play a bit faster, you won't hear the slow attack anymore. You don't even have to play legato. But most important is that there's just a single filter for all the eight notes you can play at the same time. This design is called paraphonic. It restricts the playing possibilities. But as you can imagine, it's much cheaper than using one filter per voice, which would be true polyphony. So if you hold down a key and press another one, the envelope is triggered for both notes. So it sounds as if you play the held note again. But this is also depending on the tone you choose. If you choose a tone that has a short volume decay, like Celesta for example, the effect is not so obvious because the held note has faded out completely. It's no problem if you play monophonic lines or all notes at the same time. But depending on how slow the envelope is set or how fast you play, it can be a bit annoying. However, it can also lead to some nice effects, like a kind of delay or echo effect. Thank you. 
The second option to modulate the color frequency is the wow effect. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but I think the name is supposed to give an impression of what the effect sounds like. If it's switched on, the ADS envelope is turned off, so you can't use both at the same time. It constantly opens and closes the filter depending on the LFO speed. It's the same LFO as for the chorus, so you can use the speed control to change the effect. The third option is the breath controller. It should allow you to change the cutoff frequency depending on how hard you blow into it. It doesn't do anything else than opening or closing the filter, like you could manually do with a slider. If I ever find one for a reasonable price, I will make an extra video about it. You don't have a manual bass mode, but thanks to the extra volume controls for chords and bass, you can play a bass line while the rhythm is stopped. So you can play two different tones at a time. that the filter can be assigned to the rhythm as well. This envelope is triggered by the kick drum, so with the short decay you can make the rest of the kit sound softer. Or use the wow effect. What I like even more is that the filter can also be assigned to the bass and chords.
And finally, we can assign the filter to a white noise generator. Again, the filter envelope is triggered by the kick drum. Turn down the rhythm volume if you want to use the noise only. The MT400V is without a doubt one of the most interesting Casio keyboards. It has a lot of features you also find on a couple of other Casio keyboards of that time. But it's the only MT model with an adjustable analog filter. There are limitations because of the source material. You are stuck with the 20 preset tones which can only be changed to a certain amount. There is no octave switch and no control over the volume envelopes. The vowel consonant synthesis and its specific timbres will always shine through. But there is enough room for experimentation. And one more word about the drum machine. It really sounds pretty good. And actually not that much different than all the high priced vintage drum machines. And here you also get a filter and a noise generator. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching.